Welcome to Food, Wine, and Whiskey, a podcast about having fun conversations on tasty dishes, vinos, and spirits from around the world. Rob is your host. He is an avid home chef, WSET Level 2 award in wine, and a whiskey drinker and collector. Time to set the table. Here's Rob. Hey, everyone. Thanks for stopping in for another episode. Whether you're a first-time listener or you've been around for a few episodes, big shout-out, big thanks to you all for uh, for listening to the show. We really appreciate that. And if we could ask you one thing, it would just be wherever you listen to the show, whether it be uh, Google, Apple, Spotify, whatever it is, leaving us a review really helps the show, and we really, really appreciate it. All right, into today's episode. I am flying solo, as you can tell, and typically... I really like having a a guest on the show and uh, kind of some bantering back and forth about a particular topic. But uh, this week, uh, you know, it's been on my mind for the last couple of weeks. I watch a lot of wine YouTube and I and I in a lot of wine groups on social media and I, I see everybody chatting about these top 100 wine lists for the year for 2023. And, you know, I'm an avid wine drinker. I I have, you know, I wouldn't say I'm a collector uh, because I, I don't, you know, collect bottles just to let them sit there. I, I have a few bottles. I have about 400 bottles here at the house. And so we, we have, uh, you know, an inventory of wine, if you will, uh, at the ready so that we can drink, drink some wine when we want to. And so I'm always looking to explore and, uh, you know, try new things, find new things. And, it, you know, who doesn't want a wine that's good, right? If you're spending your money on a bottle of wine, <clears throat> you obviously want that bottle of wine to be really good when you enjoy it. But I've never used one of these lists. I've been in the wine for about 15 years now. And really, you know, more down that rabbit hole the last probably f- five to seven years where I've really taking a a dive down the rabbit hole i've done a lot more research instead of just drinking i'm really understanding wines the processes soils gotten a little education in wine you know all that kind of stuff so maybe you could call me a wine geek now a bit of a nerd and and i wouldn't be offended by that i would say it, it applies um but I've just never understood these lists. And by the way, I'll give you a little tease. This this episode's out today. This is Tuesday. Uh, next Tuesday, we will have a, another episode out. Uh, today, you're hearing me kind of air my grievances. or And I don't want to say grievances because I'm, I'm probably going to ride the fence a little bit. I'm going to go both ways. I, I There might be some things I like about these lists, but there's obviously a lot more I I don't know how relevant these lists are, how helpful they are to the wine consumer. So I'm going to give my opinions on that. But I'm bringing it up next week because the other thing that's just a struggle for me as a wine consumer, and I, and I think a lot of wine consumers are this way, if they're into wine or trying to use these at all, are the wine scores, right? The, specifically the 100-point system. If, if you're going to a store and you're seeing a score on a bottle of wine, how do you use that? And so that's next week's show, a little tease there. But back to this week. Um, so as I, I watched a bunch of YouTube shows, I like all the wine people on YouTube. Uh, there's a lot of lists out there. There's wine enthusiasts, James Suckling, Total Wine has their list. Um, all these big box stores kind of put to, their list together. Um, a lot of different critics have their lists. And so there's, there's a lot of information on, you know, what are the best wines, the, the best 100 wines of 2023. Well, as I saw people kind of critiquing lists, it seemed that most of them that I know and respect were coming back to the wine spectator list. So when I first thought about doing this episode, I thought about just kind of trying to go through multiple lists and uh, compare them, talk about them, where's the value. But it it really boils down to what I think is the one list that most people in the world of wine um, give some credibility to, which is Wine Spectator. When I looked at their scoring system, let me see if I have this right. I believe they were the ones who used the uh, Robert Parker I'm going to tell you if I'm wrong or right here just real quick. The Robert Parker scoring system. Yeah, Wine Wine Spectator uses the 100-point scale, which is the Robert Parker scoring system. Um, And so what what that is is 
95 to 100 is a great wine, a classic. 90 to 94 is outstanding, a wine of superior character and style. 85 to 89 is very good, a wine with special qualities. 80 to 84 is a good wine, a solid wine, well-made. Uh, 75 to 79 is mediocre, a drinkable wine, but it may have minor flaws. And then, you know, 50 to 74, you just don't drink at all. Uh, so that's kind of the scoring system that they use. So when you hear these scores, that's, that's what they've applied to it. That's where it stands. And you're going to find, for the most part, everything we talk about today is going to be 90 to 94, which is outstanding, a wine of support superior character and style and 95 to 100 a classic a great wine uh, i can't remember the last time i saw on the shelf a wine with a a published score where they showed it to you uh, of 85 to 89 which by this system is still a very good wine with special qualities but you never see it anymore it seems like we've gotten to a 10 point system and that will be a a, a big conversation on next week's show with two masters of wine, mind you. So that'll be a fun episode for next week. But this week, so as we go through this list and we and we we talk about what the scores of these wines were, remember that ninety five to hundred is classic, a great wine. Ninety to ninety four is outstanding, a wine of superior character and style. So let's dive into the list. Well, let's let's first back up for a second. You got to know the criteria. What, what is the criteria for making this? You just can't throw things to the wall, right? Well, part of me thinks that's kind of what they've done here. <laughs> and as we get into this, you'll, you'll figure out why I have that opinion. But the top 100 uh, to qualify, the criteria used by Wine Spectator, quality, totally get it. And when we talk about quality, I mean, we're looking at, you know, balance in the wine, the structure of the wine. You know, and, and by balance, we mean, you know, how the fruit, the alcohol, the acidity, the tannins, how everything works together in harmony. Uh, that's the quality. Value, well, very subjective, right? The better the quality. And when we say quality, you just heard me mention all those things. Um, you know, when you get into the W set, they talk about blick, which is balance, length, intensity, and uh, complexity. Uh, you know, those are the, the characteristics that make it a quality wine as well with, with you know, uh, as you, as you kind of judge a wine. Uh, you don't have to have all four. All, all four would be a, a super fantastic wine. Two would be a good wine. Three would be a great wine. And like I said, four would be a super fantastic wine. Super fantastic, not just fantastic. Um, so that's how we get to quality, right? So uh, value, well, to the level of quality, value is subjective, man. That's, that's what would you pay for it? Well, it's different for everybody. But to me, uh, quality to price ratio is what's important. You know, how good is this wine? How much did I pay for it? That equals value. Uh, and it's subjective. I figured that out on my own. You would figure that out on your own. But I will tell you this. Nothing makes me happier then, you know, having a wine, not knowing what it is, tasting it, blinding it, talking about it, telling somebody this is how much I would pay for it. Let's just call it $50. And them going, well, it's only a $30 wine. I mean, nothing makes a, a wine drinker happier than to know that, you know, the wine they're drinking is punching up, if you will. It's, it's drinking at a level you'd be happy to pay $50 for, but you only have to pay 30 to get that bottle. Those are the kind of wines I like, and that's where I look for value is where wines punch up. Um, the, uh, the next category is availability, or the next criteria is availability. And I think this is kind of two things. I think it's uh, production, how much production of that wine was made, how many cases are available. And then I think it's also probably distribution. How, how many countries around the world is it in? Now, let's stop for a second and talk about Wine Spectator. It's an American publication. So I think a, a lot of this is driven by these wines being available in the United States, right? It's an American publication. Most of its readers are going to be in America. And when they see this and they want to go to their stores and shop for these wines, they want them to be available here. So I think that's probably, I don't know that for sure, but I think that's probably what's driving this. Um, so that's our criteria for making the list. 
Uh, I will tell you, I was a little surprised as you go through the top 100 this year. You will see that there are 27. We're not going to go through every wine on this list. Kind of the, the point of this episode is a little bit of me just kind of giving, not even a little bit, a lot of me just giving you my opinion on the list. You know, do I find it valuable? What do I like about the list? What do I not like about the list? Um, what am I confused about, about the list? All these kind of things. Just me kind of venting, if you will, and, and trying to figure this out. And the hope is, as you listen to this, you might, <clears throat> you know, figure out some things along with me. Uh, or you may, you know, maybe I make you trigger something to make you think of something you haven't thought of before. Maybe you've been buying wines off this list just because they were on the list. And now you're going to kind of reevaluate how you look at those wines on the list, you know, based on quality, value, availability, your palate, your price point for what you want to spend on wines, things like that. Cause price is a big part of this as well. So, um, let's see here. <clears throat> I will tell you, like I said, 27 wines from the United States on this list, which I thought was a lot. I mean, we're nearing 30, which would be 30% of the list. Well, again, American publication, sup- trying to support, I assume, you know, the American production of wine. So somewhat get it, but as a, a wine nerd, <clears throat> there's, there's no way 30% of the world's best wines this year were made in America. That's just not the case. So again, how valuable is this list to me? What am I looking at? So anyway, we're going to go through it. We're going to talk about it. I will point out a couple of things that stood out to me on this list as well. One is that Bordeaux is this classic region, you know, thought to make some of the best, not thought to, they do make some of the best wines in the world. And in this list this year, top 100, they have two in the top 10, but only four in the list overall, which was a a bit shocking to me, a bit surprising to me. Um, That's an old world, classic region, known for some of the best wines in the world, known for some of the most expensive wines in the world. And then to contrast that, you have a new world wine region, New Zealand, And specific in New Zealand, Marlborough, which also has four wines in the top 100. Very surprising to me to look at this and go, okay, from Marlborough, New Zealand, one region in New Zealand, Marlborough, four wines in the top 100. One region in France, Bordeaux, four wines in the top 100. I would have never guessed that. Obviously, if you know New Zealand wines, Marlborough, this is a Sauvignon Blanc. And what was also a little surprising to me was... There are seven total Sauvignon Blancs in the top 100. Mm -hmm. And we've been drinking Sauvignon Blanc for a while here at our house. And it's a solid wine. It's a very uh, uh, consistent wine. I would say, you know, most places from around the world, uh, you you make it pretty well. It's hard to kind of, I don't want to say it's hard to screw that up because it can be screwed up. But it's just a grape that can be grown in a lot of places and wines can be made from it in a lot of places and made well. And I think you see that in a lot of places. We have, you know, Sauvignon Blanc from Argentina we like, obviously from Napa Valley that we like, from the Loire Valley that we like uh, in France, Um, from Bordeaux, obviously, now New Zealand, also in Australia. So uh, it's a wine that I I wouldn't have thought would have so many on here from, from Sauvignon Blanc, but I've, I've been hearing people talk about how Sauvignon Blanc is making a comeback that winemakers are what they're changing. I don't know, but they're changing it up and and it's just for whatever reason, it's, it's, uh, it's jumping to the spotlight again. And this list would obviously indicate that as well. So um, let's jump into the list. I'm going to start at number 100, and I'm just going to jump all around. And one, things, one of the things that I want to talk about is vintages are all over the place. Uh, point systems are, are point systems. Points, the scoring of these wines. Again, it's going to be between 90 and 100 on, on all of these. There's nothing below 90 on this list are all over the place. And price is all over the place. So here's the thing. Let's start. I said I'm going to start at 100. I'm going to start real quick. At wine number one, the number one wine in the world, the top 100 this year, is Argiano. It's a Brunello de Montalcino from Tuscany, from Brunello. 
uh, from, or excuse me, from Montalcino. It's a Brunello, a Sangiovese wine, 2018. The score that this wine got from Wine Spectator is 95. The cost for this wine per bottle, $90. Well, a lot of you would look at that and go, or hear that and go, 90 bucks, man, that's a big number. And it, and it is a big number, no doubt about it. Uh, but I will tell you this. Again, I said it's, it's, everybody has their, their kind of you know, spectrum on the, on the price scale of what they would pay for a wine. This is something that if I found it, I, I would probably pick up at least one bottle. It's a little on the higher side for me, but it's not crazy expensive when you start talking about Brunello. I mean, most really good Brunellos are going to be somewhere in that call it 45 to 65 70 dollar range so if i have to splurge by another 20 25 bucks to get what is you know here we get to the hype and the marketing again the best wine in the world this year just to to try it i would want to do that okay um now let's go to wine number 100 remember this is a number one was 95 points $90. The number 100 wine on the list, the last wine to make it, is a Napa Valley wine from Rutherford, Morisoli. It's Cabernet Sauvignon. Rutherford is, you know, a very small AVA, produces some great wines, but this doesn't say a state or anything like that. It's just all the grapes came from within Rutherford. The vintage is 2019. The score is 93 points. And the price tag is $205. And I'm going, I don't get it. You know, this is, as a consumer, part of this that confuses me. I would never, ever search out and pay for this wine. I have no interest in a $205 bottle of wine. Uh, You know, I'm a golfer. And I will tell you, I I can buy buy a dozen golf balls uh, that I actually play with, which are... uh, Boy, now I can't forget the name of them, but they're not Titleist Pro V1s. They cost me $25 for two dozen, and they're called Laddies, L-A-D-I, L-A-D-D-I-E, Laddies. Um, And I'm a a pretty decent golfer. I would never pay, you know, $55, $60 a dozen for Pro V1. And I'm, I'm a good golfer. I just can't tell the difference between the balls. I'm not good enough to notice the difference. So the same thing would be with this wine, right? $205 a bottle versus 90 for the number one wine in the world. And it's double the price, more than double the price. Can I tell the difference? It's two points less, so it's not as good a wine, which is another thing that always gets me on these lists. You know, how can a wine at 95 points, 90 bucks, be that much better or two points better but half the price of another wine it's just where you know again these lists i don't know how how helpful they are to the consumer i really don't know um points are all over the place number 99 on the list is a champagne for 110 bucks non-vintage 93 points 110 dollars from Fleur de merleval it's a brut rosé and, uh, you know, again, 110 bucks for a champagne, very expensive. So this is what I'm talking about with the list overall. Uh, number 98 is a Napa Valley wine. I'm assuming it's a Cabernet. 92 points, $225. So, again, prices are crazy on this list. So I don't know who this list is driven for. Or once compiled, how the consumer is supposed to use this list. Because at number 98... For a 92-point wine, for $225, why would I ever search out and want to buy that one when I could go down to number 88? And I love a, a Coach de Rhone. You know, I, I love a Syrah, you know, or a Grenache, you know, those, those grapes in a wine. Domaine de Morichon, this is an 88, number 88 on the list, 92 points, same as that $225 wine, I can go find this for $30. And that's where, as a consumer, as I kind of go through this list, I'm trying to figure out, what the hell am I doing here? What am I looking for? What am I trying to to extrapolate from this list 
to be able to do something with it and make a, a purchasing decision about wine. I have no idea. I really don't. And I will tell you, for me, it boils down to, and I think most people, this is what it would boil down to, is cost and the score it got. Um, it's, it's really becomes that simple for me. I don't know if it's that way for everybody. I'd love to hear. And by the way, you can communicate with me on social media uh, at Food Whiskey on X, formerly Twitter, at Food Whiskey. Uh, you can also get me at at food underscore wine underscore whiskey on Instagram. And then we have a Facebook group on Facebook called Food, Wine, and Whiskey. If you want to join there, I, I would love if anybody's listening and wants to give me some some feedback or thoughts on how if they use this list and if they do, why they do, if they don't use this list, why they don't. Um, but yeah, I, I've never bought a wine off a wine list like this. And to be honest with you, typically I don't, I don't uh, even pay attention, to be honest with you. I don't even look at them. But for the last couple of years, I've, I've noticed them, and I, and I notice as I get more into the, the wine world with wine people, it seems that they're all talking about these lists, and, and I, I don't know why. I don't know what, what the value is. Um, so let's go through some more of this list. I, things that might stick out to me on wines that are maybe too high of price or maybe wines that I think I might want to try because I think it's a good price. As we go through here, I uh, will tell you, here, here's something that I would say is a great value, that ones that I would try. So when we get down to, you know, I mentioned number 88. That's kind of where this little, this window starts of what I think are some, some good priced wines that if I found them, I would, I would love to try them if I could find them. And then that's one of the things I would mention is that when you talk about uh, this list, when it comes out, part of my question would be, again, I've never went out and shopped for these. But I have to assume a couple of things. One, if it made this list and it's on a shelf somewhere, it ain't going to be on that shelf for very long, right? People are going to go crazy wanting to get one of the one, uh, t- one of the top 100 wines of this year. Uh, two, it tells me what the suggested retail price is here on this list. Is it still the same? I mean, once it makes the list, and you know, it's that whole supply and demand. Are people now going to? You know, at these stores, it's, you know, I, I don't blame them. If it's a $24 wine, are they going to now double that and charge 48 And I guarantee you people will still buy it. But uh, anyway, back to my point of we're in a window of wines that I think would be cool to try if I could find them at a price point that I think is really, really good. Um, we start with number 88 that I told you about, the Cote d'Arome, $30, 92-point wine. Below that... We have, and if you're not a Riesling fan, if you haven't tried Rieslings before, this is a cabinet. It's a little bit more on the off-dry style. It might be a little residual sugar in there. Rieslings are fantastic. If you haven't tried them, try them. This is a Fritz Hogg uh, 2021, 92 points, 29 bucks. Definitely want to give it a try. Uh, this next wine is Chateau Germain. It's a Corbiere's. I, I honestly don't know what that is. I don't know if it's a white wine or a red wine. But if I could find it at 92 points and $25, I would give it a try. Uh, Alpha Estate. It's a Sauvignon Blanc. Florinia. Uh, I'm guessing that's Italian. 2022, $27. It, it rates 90 points. And then Vina Santa Ima, or Carmenere. It is a 2019 91 points, $30. But here's the steal. A Nero de Alvia from Sicily, from Morigante, 2020, 90 points, but $19. And this is the number 83 wine on this list. I mean, that's a steal. I mean, if you're just out buying wine, you're just like, man, I'm going to pick up a bottle. You're probably going to spend 15, 20 bucks. Well, why not if it's there? Pick this one up for, you know, this is where you're going to hear me, like I said, going back and forth a little bit of on the fence, you know. And, and as I said just a second ago, it's because of price, right? 90 is not the highest score, but at 19 bucks, it's number 83 on the list. Again, I don't know how it can be 90 points and number 83, and the other one up here is number uh, 
this, wait, what did I say? This is number 83 for $19 and 90 points. And then number 90 is 96 points for 150. So again, this is where the list confuses the hell out of me and it makes no sense. But for 90 points, $19, I'd give that one a try. Number 79 is Ribera de Del Doro, which is in Spain. And, and look, if you haven't had Spanish wines, one, they're fantastic, and two, they're great value. And this is an example of that. This wine is Bella, Bella from Ribera del Doro, 2021, 91 points, $20. How can you beat that? $20. Can't beat it at all. Um, but again, that's number 79, $20, 91 points. Number 80, which means it's a worse wine. Worse in, in, in the sense that it didn't come in as high as this one. Not worse that it's a bad wine. But worse, 91 points for number 79. 80 is at 96 points. So we're going from a wine that is, it's outstanding. I mean, it's good. It's got some really cool characteristics to it. To a classic, just a stunning wine at 96 but it's not ranked as high. This is where this list confuses the hell out of me. The next two wines, 72 and 71. Poggio Sampolo, a good producer. This is the Rosso de Montalcino. 90 points for the 2020 vintage, but 25 bucks. To me, that's a great value. Uh, 90 points doesn't bother me. I mean, I don't know what that means, but... Again, we'll talk about that next week. But $25 for a Rosso de Montalcino, I'm going to pull a trigger on that probably all day long. And then number 71 right below that also caught my eye because it's a, uh, a Riesling, uh, a cabinet from the Mosel in Germany. Uh, it's Selbach Oyster, which is a very well-known producer, quality producer. It's 23 bucks. So at number 71, you can't, you can't beat that at all. Uh, number 65 caught my eye because I know Groth, 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 however you say it, G-R-O-T-H. It's a Sauvignon Blanc from Napa, Napa Valley. 92 points. 30 bucks is what they have it at. Uh, I can tell you I see it around here, and I'm in the Houston area. I see it sub-25 all the time. So I, I, I drank that, my wife and I, several years ago, probably four or five years ago it was in the rotation. Hasn't been for a while, but, you know. Again, the list is working, right? I, I see it now and go, hey, I may have to give it another shot. See what I think. This is for the uh, 2022 vintage and see if I can find that and check it out. Um, catching my eye again, another Frank family. Frank family is in Rutherford, Cabernet Sauvignon, Napa Valley. 95 points at number 61, 110 bucks. 95 points, 110 bucks at number 61. Go two down from that at number 59. You've got Sitche. It's a Chianti Classico. 2021, 91 points, $26. I mean, again, scratch your head, right? So what you're telling me is this at number 59, you're telling me it's a better wine. It's a better wine at 59 than number 61. It has to be. It's ranked higher. 61 cost you $110. 59 cost you 26. Well, wait a second. 61 has 95 points. 59 has 91 points. So 61's a better wine? Beats the hell out of me. That's why I'm doing this episode. What does this really mean? I mean, I really got to have somebody on who can help me dissect and understand these lists because to me, it's like somebody took a thousand wines and said the hundred that stick to the wall. Where they stick is where we're putting them. Joel Gott, Sauvignon Blanc. I'm not a fan of Joel Gott. This is the number 31 wine in the world, and it's 12 bucks. The score on it's 91 points. 12 bucks, number 31 in the top 100, 91 points, Joel Gott, Sauvignon Blanc. I don't know about that one. Uh... Going through here, boy, I tell you what, now we're getting down into the 20s. We're getting some bigger price tags again. Although I will say on this list, I looked at some other lists. This list has way more wines. I would say over half of the wines 
are below $80 on this list where I looked at, you know, James Sucklings and, uh, 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 wine enthusiasts. And they, they had some, some crazy prices on some wines on most of their wines on those lists. And so, uh, this I think has done a better job as far as, you know, being consumer friendly, you know, as far as cost. So good job there. Wine spectator. If I drop down to wine number 10, Gray Walk, Gray Walk from Marlboro, Sauvignon Blanc, New Zealand, 95 points, $23. How about that? That's one I would try, 95 points. Right above that, we have a, a Chianti Classico Grand Celestion. It's uh, 96 points for $42. So you can tell we're, we're getting ready to crack this top 10. So we're going to see some bigger numbers now. Um, number nine is a Pinot Noir from the Williamette, Williamette Valley. Williamette, Williamette. I don't know how you say it. Everybody kind of gets on you for that or gets on me for not pronouncing it right. Uh, again, I'm impressed at the price. 94 points. Vintage is 2021. 40 bucks. I mean, that's a steal for that region. This is a number nine wine. I mean, this is, again, where I'm flip-flopping, where I'm going, okay, maybe I do want to put a little effort and look for this one because knowing prices of Pinot Noir in that region, in that valley specifically, this is a steal. 94 points, 40 bucks. Man, you can't beat that. And then, of course, we get to a, a, a big number when we drop down to number eight from number nine. Number eight is a uh, Bordeaux from the... Pauliac. It is Chateau Pichon Baron. It's 2020, 97 points, 165 bones. I mean, you are going to drop a few bucks for that one. I Again, 97 points, intriguing, 165 points. I'll hope a friend of mine buys that bottle and will share a glass with me because <laughs> I don't know that I'm going to drop $165 on, on that bottle of wine. Matter of fact, I do know I'm not going to drop $165 on that bottle of wine. Um, but right below that is An Antitor Antonori, which is Chianti Classico. I know the producer, not personally, had their wines. Uh, it's a Marchese Antonori Reserva 2020, 95 points, 50 bucks. So again, let's go back up to that uh, Bordeaux, 97 points, 165 Chianti Classico Reserva, 95 points, 50 bucks. And then if we go down to number six, Dunn from Cabernet Sauvignon from Howell Mountain in Napa Valley, 96 points, 175 bucks. I know everybody knows Dunn. If, you, if, if you've started in wine in Napa Valley, <clears throat> if you don't know Dunn, you know, go, go just kind of look it up. It's an iconic wine, been around a long time, fantastic producer, makes fantastic wines, but at 175 bones, I'm not going to go look for that one. That's just too much for a bottle of wine for me. Uh, it just is. I think there's too many good wines in the world that you can get sub 50 bucks between 30 and 50 bucks. I don't know why you would need to, I guess, unless you just, you know, it's a special occasion. You want to splurge, you could do it, but, uh, not something I would do on a, you know, kind of regular basis. I, there is one on here, uh, as we get ready to finish this episode up, rain is one R A E N rain from the Sonoma coast, uh, in California. I've heard a lot of people talk about this producer. They make Pinot Noir. Uh, this is Royal St. Robert Cuvée. Uh, it's a little pricey. It's a lot pricey for some people. 70 bucks, But at $95, you know, when I talked about the Weemette Valley being around 40 bucks at 94 points, this is 95 points at 70 bucks in the Sonoma Coast. Um, it's a little bit more in line what I would expect in, in that part of, you know, the U.S. and Oregon and California for, for Pinot Noir. Uh, so I, I would be intrigued only because it's got a nice score. Uh, and again, I don't know what scores mean. It just I see a big number and I'm going, it's got to be good. I don't know what else to take from that. Uh, but I've had friends who've had this wine and think it's really, really good. So uh, for that reason, more for that reason, because of the referral from friends who've had it, uh, not that maybe not this vintage, earlier vintages, but uh, have said it's a fantastic wine. I would try it. 
Um, but then you look at that Pinot Noir, like I said, 95.70 bucks. That's number four, Rain, R-A-E-N. Let's drop down to the number two wine on the list, Occidental. It's a Pinot Noir, again, from West Sonoma Coast, Freestone Occidental, Vintage 2021, 94 points and 65 bucks. So you're losing a point. You're saving five bucks. I couldn't tell the difference. I'd probably try both of those. I'd probably honestly try both of those. So, uh, and we'll finish up just reminding you the number one wine on this year's Wine Spectator uh, top 100 wines was the Argiano Brunello de Montecino. It's the 2018, 95 points, 90 bucks, the number one wine in the world. And again, as you heard me go through this, you might be as confused as I am right now. And that was part of the point of doing this episode is how crazy this is, how crazy prices are from, from wine to wine. You know, some being way more expensive, but ranked Higher, higher meaning, well, uh, let's say it this way, uh, with a, uh, boy, this can get confusing, right? Higher being a higher number, higher, let's do higher as number one being the highest, the best rated wine. Uh, so some of these wines have a big price tag, but are ranked uh, as a lesser wine than other wines with a much lower price tag, which is confusing. And the point systems, some are... A higher number, meaning like number eight or nine on the list, with a score of 91, and other wines are, uh, you know, 27 on the list with a score of 94. And it's like, how can that be? So, again, I have no idea, and I know I wasn't much help for you today, but hopefully it was a little bit entertaining and made you think about this list a little bit more. I have no idea how this list is put together. Uh, I will tell you, ultimately for me, I look at the list and try to find, are there wines that I've had and did they make the list? And maybe I want to buy them again. Did I like them when I tried them? You know, asking those kind of questions. But the only other thing would be in my price window, are there wines that I want to try? And, you know, like I said, I've never bought wines from the list before. I, th- I think I, I, I kind of could, because I've become this wine geek, this wine nerd, I think I want to do that now. So I think I'm going to take this list and see if I can't find some of these within my price window to, to try. And that, that's really all I get from this. You know, are there some wines on here that I want to try within the price range that I want to spend? And that's, that's really it. But uh, I would say... Don't spend a lot of time looking for wines on this list. I I would, you know, download this onto your phone, have it accessible when you're out shopping, look a little bit. If you can find one, great. Because the world of wine is just a hole that doesn't have a bottom. So what I mean by that is there's just so many good wines. There's always plenty of good wine to drink. Uh, Don't beat yourself up trying to find wines on this list necessarily. But uh, like I said, if there's wines that you like, wines that you're already drinking, maybe maybe search them out when you're out just kind of shopping for wines. But that's my two cents on the wine list. Love to hear what you guys think about wine list, the top 100 wine lists or uh, point systems or, you know, people's opinions on wines. Do you have a favorite person that your palate aligns with and you listen to? But I'd love to hear from you. Get on our Facebook page. You know, get on Facebook. Search us out at uh, Food, Wine, and Whiskey on Facebook. It's a group. Love to have you join us there. Appreciate you listening to this episode of Food, Wine, and Whiskey. And until our next episode, enjoy your next pour.